Hello, welcome back to Dan's Card Corner. So this time we have some more uh, vintage stuff, mainly Nintendo, although there is an added bonus here. Uh, I have these three packs of Nintendo Game Pack cards from Topps, and as an added bonus, the seller threw in this pack of Harry and the Hendersons cards. Uh, so we'll open that as well. Uh, and I also have separately nothing to open here, but here's this set of uh, Super Mario and Zelda cards uh, from Halloween of 1991, I believe. It was like a 91 copyright date anyway. Let's start with these. Um, these were uh, put out by Impel as a uh, part of the National Safe Kids campaign, which I think had a bunch of, uh, from what I've looked into, they had a bunch of bagged stuff you could give away instead of candy on Halloween. Um, with these, they were uh, given out, uh, or they were in the pack as uh, basically individual packets of three cards each. And it seems to be a set of six total, so I have all of them here. Uh, I don't know if those individual three card packs were randomized or, um, or if it was always two of the same ones. But either way, um, that's what these were originally from. Uh, and they have, you know, nice key art from the games. Uh, I've kind of put them in order. So first we have the one representing Super Mario Brothers 1. Uh, and I actually don't know if I've seen this artwork before. Uh, it is uh, definitely of the era with the, uh, the Mario 1 era, that is, with the uh, red overalls on blue shirt, which uh, with Mario 3, as we'll see when we get to the artwork for that game, uh, those colors got reversed. Uh, we have an overly happy Toad. Uh, and a rather disturbingly young uh, depiction of Princess Peach there, if that indeed is who that it's supposed to be. I assume it is, since again, this is the card for Mario 1. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the National Safe Kids campaign, you might want to uh, you might want to check in on that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this was drawn by Miyamoto himself or not, but it is, it is reminiscent of the Japanese Super Mario Brothers 1 box art, which uh, I believe Miyamoto did draw, so... I don't know. Uh, he did have a different depiction of uh, Peach on that. A somewhat more age-appropriate one, though. So I'm guessing it might not be, but who knows. Uh, anyway, there is a write-up on the back. To the delight of the mushroom people, Mario defeats the Koopa foes and rescues Princess Toadstool. And yeah, I, I slipped myself there and said Peach, but in the U.S. she was still Princess Toadstool until, uh, all the way up until uh, Super Mario 64. A simple plumber, Mario was working in Brooklyn, uh, so we're working with the lore from the Super Mario Brothers Super Show here. Um, was working in Brooklyn one day when he heard a distant voice echoing up through the pipes. Uh, it was the Princess Toadstool imprisoned uh, by the evil King Koopa Bowser. Mario knew he could not stand by while such injustice reigned, so he leapt into the nearest manhole, was whisked to the Mushroom Kingdom, and began the work of rescuing the princess. So that's, in broad strokes, I guess, the plot of Mario 1. Uh, here we have for Super Mario Brothers 2, this is familiar artwork. This was uh, right in the manual for Mario 2, American Mario 2, that is. Which, by the way, let's, let's clear that up here, because there's this, you know, this whole internet age thing. Oh, it's not a real Mario game. It's just Doki Doki Panic reskinned, and it's not the real Mario 2. Well, Nintendo has a list of what games are actually officially part of the mainline Super Mario Brothers series. There aren't many games on it. Donkey Kong is not on that list, and that's the game Mario debuted in. <laughs> uh, Super Mario RPG is not on that list. Um, you know, Mario Kart isn't. Um, but of the few games that are part of that list, the American Super Mario Brothers 2 is one of them. So yes, it is a real Mario game. I know it did start as, you know, kind of a hack of Doki Doki Panic, but it is part of the Mario series now. And, you know, people will also try to claim, oh, it's the black sheep of the series. Nobody likes it compared to the other two. It's not like the others. Well, again, I was there. Uh, when Mario 2 came out, it was extremely popular. It was very well thought of. Um, you know, it's not like the others. Well, as far as the Super Mario games, there was only one other one in the U.S. at the time. And we didn't know it was, you know, a different game that was repurposed as Mario 2. Uh, Nintendo didn't acknowledge that, I don't think, until the uh, Mario Madness Player's Guide for Super Mario World, uh, which came out, you know, years later. 
Um, but yeah, Mario 2, it's, uh, I don't remember where exactly it places, but it's on the list of best-selling games for the system. It was extremely popular. Um, it's well thought of. And I'll say it, it's a better game than the Japanese Mario 2. How about that? <laughs> I think it was the right choice to uh, release that instead of, you know, again, a game that was very, very similar to the first one, just way harder to, some would argue, uh, unnecessarily so. Unnecessarily harder. So anyway, that's my rant on Mario 2 over with. But yeah, there's a lot of internet age revisionism over that game. And uh, again, if you were there when it came out, and I was, most of it just wasn't what was wasn't what how it was thought of at the time. Anyway, Mario. This is a steep stairway in, the, in my head. His voice is still Captain Lou Albano, not Charles Martin, eh? This is a steep stairway, boys and girls, and I need to climb it safely. It's the only way to reach the world of dreams. If I had my plumbing tools, I'd rig up some handrails and hold on to them all the way to the top. But I guess I have to do the next best thing. Go slowly and take one step at a time. So that really doesn't say anything about the plot of Mario 2. Uh, the stairway was just a dream that Mario had, and then he wakes up and sees it in real life. And of course, it turns out the whole thing is a dream. Like, the original sighting of the stairway was a dream within a dream, because the entirety of Super Mario Brothers 2 is a dream. But, uh, yeah, anyway. There's that one. And then there's two from Mario 3. And this, this key art, this is actually the Japanese box art, uh, which, I mean, the yellow box, the American box, is iconic for sure. But I do really like this artwork also. So uh, I'm kind of divided. Like, on one hand, yeah, again, that yellow box is iconic. But uh, on the other hand, this is really a cool piece of artwork. I wish this was somewhere on the American copy, if not the front cover. Um... Anyway, Raccoon Mario flies from the Mushroom Kingdom with Bowser and all the little Koopalings close behind. But look, there are lots of other enemies pursuing Mario as well. How many can you find? Certainly some green Koopa Troopas, a few bloopers, and some green Koopa Paratroopas. The enemies don't know it yet, but Mario is only a decoy. It's Luigi, who's escaping from Mushroom to, to, the Mushroom Kingdom with Princess Toadstool. Hooray for Mario and Luigi. So that's literally just a paragraph-length description of the artwork itself basically so that's kind of funny this uh this piece of artwork i mean they changed his mouth but that's otherwise the picture of mario from the uh american box art uh and i think they changed what direction his eyes are looking to but uh this overall picture i have seen i have a actually a poster in my game room uh i printed it out it's not a real poster but uh it's i think a french ad for mario 3 like a magazine ad and it's this picture this overall thing so yeah, I don't know if this appeared anywhere else, but uh, that's what I know it from anyway. As Luigi rushes up the stairs of King Koopa's, uh, as King Bowser's castle, Raccoon Mario lures the boatload of Koopas away. Can you name all the Koopalings? And it lames them. Um, so yeah, it's again just another uh, kind of paragraph description of the artwork itself. <laughs> And then the last two are uh, Zelda, specifically they're from Zelda 2, and I don't remember for sure offhand, but I think these might have both been in the manual for uh, that game, if not certainly in advertisements. In a time when people didn't have last names, that's kind of funny. Link was born to Arn and Medilla. Medilla? I don't remember that piece of lore. Arn? Was it Arn Anderson? The Enforcer? Is, is that Link's dad? Anyway, um... They were best known for their unusually pointed ears. Uh, all right, they're just they're just messing around with this description, aren't they? <laughs> they all lived in Calatia until uh, they're just making this up as they go, aren't they? <laughs> Again, just messing around and making it up until Link turned 16 years old and left home for excitement and adventure. His travels led him to Hyrule, where he defeated the wizard Ganon and rescued Princess Zelda. Now Link must just mostly just likes to have fun, battling Moblin, storming castles, and trying to kiss Zelda. Well, uh, I guess that did happen in the uh, Zelda cartoon, right? He was always trying to kiss her and never did. Of course, she usually did most of the work in the Zelda cartoon. He just kind of took credit for it and said, Excuse me, princess. 
And this is kind of a cool one. This is uh, actually more the Mario, uh, the Mario, the Zelda 1 depiction of Link, isn't it? But it is for Zelda 2 because it does have, uh, uh, what were they called, those dragon things in the water. Link and his pixie friend Sprite encounter enemies, monsters, and friends. Oh, sorry. And fiends. Yes. <laughs> Link searches for the missing pieces of the Triforce of Power. As Princess Zelda smashed the Triforce and hid the pieces to prevent the evil wizard Ganon from finding it. In turn, the wicked Ganon imprisoned her for her deed. Who will help us rescue the princess? asks Impa, Zelda's nursemaid. And soon, Link is off on an adventure. So, that's that set. Again, I think this is the whole set, just the six cards. Um, and again, if you got them as a Halloween present, you'd have to get uh, two packs of them to complete the set. Anyway, uh, this was kind of the bigger series of uh, Nintendo trading cards. These are the ones you could actually buy in stores, um, you know, normally just as sealed packs as these are. Uh, and these are from Topps. Uh, and the year on the, the, these are uh, 1989. And they're nice wax packs, so they open easy. So we have one of the uh, Mario 2 Scratcher cards right there, Mario fighting Mauser. So that's that's a good picture. Oh, we actually, I guess they're all scratch cards. Huh. That's interesting. So yeah, we have uh, Mario fighting Mauser. We have uh, Zelda fighting the, uh, the eye thing. The thing is, I don't want to scratch these. Oh, we actually have third party games in here too. Uh, Double Dragon. And they do have tips on the backs. So we'll go back, but we do also have stickers. Um, Little Mac from Punch Out and the, the nice uh, Zelda one, uh, which actually, I guess they're technically two stickers because the Nintendo logos on those are a separate piece. So I'm not gonna take the stickers off or scratch these off or anything, but uh, yeah, um, as far as game tips, find one arrow to advance to the right side of, of the card. Uh, oh, this is the directions for the game on the front. Okay, so they're not game tips. The uh, the stickers have game tips on them. Push on every tombstone in the graveyard in Zelda. One of them hides the entrance to a secret cave. Uh, and also for Zelda... Oh, that was actually on the Punch-Out card. Yeah, they're both Zelda tips, but not necessarily corresponding in the case of the uh, Punch-Out sticker. Also interesting, um, I'll, I'll go back to it. Uh, first, this to press the select button quickly after giving Goria your bait, then hit up A and continue. You'll beat the Goria and still have the bait in her inventory. Well, that's just cheating. <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, I did just notice with the Punch-Out sticker, it is just Punch-Out. Uh, no Mike Tyson's Punch-Out here, which is interesting because that wasn't the version of the game that was out at the time. Uh, I mean, the original arcade game was just Punch-Out. But yeah, the uh, first release of the home version was Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, and then of course later it was reissued when they didn't renew the contract with Tyson. So it became Punch-Out, also known as Punch-Out with featuring Mr. Dream. But uh, yeah, that's interesting that in 1989, before the Mr. Dream version, this already just had Punch-Out on it. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna save the wrapper too. It, it ripped, uh, I didn't have to rip it even. It opened easily and you know, it's a cool wrapper with Mario. And then we have a uh, Princess Peach wrapper as well on the second pack. That opens easy as well. All right, so what do we have here? We have another double dragon one right on top. So yeah, there's that. Another Mario 2 one. A backwards adventure of Link one, which doesn't, does not say uh, Zelda 2 on it, interestingly. Oh, it does on the back. Yeah, just on the front, it's uh, Adventure of Link only. And then for the stickers, we have another Punch Out one uh, with uh, Little Mac knocking out a uh, Piston Honda there, I think that is. And then we have Chintai, who is the uh, level 2 boss in uh, Double Dragon. And uh, you can actually cheese him easily. Um, basically, if you, you climbed up the ladder, so he came out of the door, and then you climb down the ladder. And uh, once he's off screen, the game just registers it as you winning the fight and lets you go on to the next level. So it's like, I, you know, he sees you climbing back down. And he's like, oh, screw that. I'm not following him. <laughs> and that just gives up, I guess. But uh, yeah, he's the level, I think it's level two. Uh, is the boss. You're climbing the construction site anyway. Um, and then he does come back, I think, as a regular enemy in later levels. All right, so pack number three, the last Nintendo pack here. 
All right, so that's a cool, uh, that's a cool Mario 2 one from the Desert World, with the uh, spitting flower thing. And there's uh, Mario 1 one. So yeah, these cards predated Mario 3's uh, American release, at least. It was out in Japan by the time these cards came out, but uh, not here, unless you had an uncle who worked for Nintendo. <laughs> and then you have another uh, Adventure of Link one. And then for the stickers, uh, you have uh, Bowser, Bullet Bill, and Cheap Cheap on uh, technically two stickers there. And you have Lopar, the barrel-throwing guy from uh, Double Dragon. Anyway. Alright, so for the Harry and the Hendersons cards, I might as well just open these here since they came with the, the Nintendo ones and, you know... I don't know if that really warrants a separate individual episode for just one pack of these. Uh, but these are Harry and the Hendersons from the new hit movie. Certainly in the conversation for, uh, you know, at least the top five Sasquatch movies, right? I have to admit, I don't really remember it. I definitely would have seen it. Uh, and I think there was a Harry and the Hendersons TV show that followed the movie, too, wasn't there? Or am I making that up? Maybe it was a different Sasquatch that had a show, but I think it was Harry and the Hendersons. Anyway, uh, from the new hit movie, uh, nine picture cards, one sticker, and oh joy, one stick of bubblegum. So these are from uh, Tops. They're uh, 1987, so at least, unlike the CB Talk gum, at least I was alive. At least I existed when this gum was put in this pack. Um, so it has that going for it, I guess. <laughs> By the way, I'm turning 41 on a Saturday, so, uh, yeah. I did exist when this gum was made and when it was put in this pack, but, uh, only for a couple years. <laughs> only for a few years, so, uh, you know, we'll see what it looks like. Anyway, how many cards was this? Nine? Yeah, nine. That's a pretty good-sized pack. Oh, there it is. There's the gum. The cards are going every which way. So, uh, they have a, you know, a, a write-up describing the scene on the back. I won't go through those, but, uh, yeah. Harry hath tamed the savage beast. George is dead. <laughs> Harry fakes him out. That's a good band name, too. Harry fakes him out. What to do about Harry? Almost a play on the uh, Hitchcock movie, uh, The Trouble with Harry, isn't it? There's the sticker. Yeah, nice full body art <laughs> of uh, Harry there. Farewell to Harry and his clan. So, spoiling the ending there. Dr. Wrightwood. Harry. <laughs> so, that's his rookie card, I guess. <laughs> you know, I, I doubt I would bother getting any of these graded, but if I was, I mean, you know, this would be the one, right? <laughs> We can't keep him, son. Teaching Harry how to sit. I'm sure the hilarity ensued. Yeah, again, I don't really remember much of the movie other than, you know, that it existed and, you know, I probably saw it. But, uh, yeah, I'll have to look for that one just as a refresher, I guess. So, yeah, that's Harry and the Hendersons cards. You know, we got his rookie, so uh, that's pretty good. That's card number two from the set. I don't know how many total there are. Um... So yeah, anyway, that's a cool haul, you know, these Nintendo ones are, uh, you know, these are pretty neat looking, even if I don't bother scratching them off, which I don't think I will at this point. For one thing, as I learned with, uh, I don't know if I believe it in the episode or not, I'll probably put the episode out after this one, but uh, I have a Yo! MTV Raps card pack that I opened, and that had like a scratcher uh, contest, which expired in like 1992, but I sc tried scratching it off anyway, and like, the scratch stuff itself, like, had deteriorated, I guess, and wouldn't, you know, scratch off right, so. I don't know if that's the case with these, but, uh, you know, I'm just gonna keep these as they are. You know, they're cool looking enough on their own. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's those. Uh, so, have a good one. We'll see you again with something else. Uh, actually, we won't. I forgot. The gum for Harry and the Hendersons. Once again, it looks pretty well preserved. It doesn't look, uh, I mean, maybe it looks worse on camera than it does in person, but it looks pretty, uh, pretty much like it probably did when it was put in there. I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna chew it, but I will lightly touch my tongue to it like I did with the CV Talk gum. 
as far as the smell test, it doesn't smell like anything other than, you know, old cardboard, which is probably just rubbed off from the cards themselves. Uh, 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 oh, I can taste it. And it just tastes like, uh, you know, bubble gum. It tastes like, as I recall, all this baseball card bubble gum tasted when it was new. <laughs> So, you know, if I tried to chew it, uh, as much as you could chew this to begin with, and, it, you know, you really couldn't. I mean, it was, you know, it was pretty, pretty much a solid throughout its existence, even when you tried to chew it when it was fresh. It's probably just as fresh as it ever was, even though it's, you know, just a, a skosh under uh, 30, uh, under 40 years old. Tastes like gum. Tastes fine. From the little bit I'm tasting. But I don't think I'm willing to actually try chewing it. So yeah, anyway, now that's it. Uh, so we'll see you. Hit like and subscribe.